Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, I'm back with a highly requested Draw With Me session um, themed around Spider-Verse and the new Across the Spider-Verse movie. I've been teasing these drawings for a while now on my Instagram stories and I can't wait to jump in and share the process and my thoughts with you guys about what I made. Also, I wanted to say thank you for 20,000 subscribers. Holy cow, kind of crazy. Uh, I just checked it this morning, the time I'm doing, doing the voiceover for this video and and yeah, we hit it. So I just want to say thank you guys so much. If you're interested in more Draw With Me's and more videos like this, make sure to uh, stick around and I can't wait to make more videos for you guys. Let me know if you have any ideas of what we should do for 20,000. I know I think for 10,000, I did like a sketchbook tour of one of my old sketchbooks. So I might be doing that again, but I also am interested in like a giveaway, like a sticker giveaway of the stickers on my shop or maybe a live stream celebration or maybe all three of them. I don't know, we'll see. Let me know what you guys think but yeah this video in particular this is probably the most fun i've had in my sketchbook in a while and i really enjoyed going crazy with paint and not really knowing how it would turn out i know i kind of emphasized planning a lot in my last video for the full canvas painting i'm making but sketchbooks are a place for me to let loose and explore ideas palettes and characters i'm interested in um, making more finished works of so i like to just give myself the space to just go crazy and not really do any sort of planning and see what just comes up through pure intuition and just having fun. Also, I do want to preface that I think I will be mentioning possible spoilers as I speak about my process and my ideas. So if you're not interested in that, click off now and maybe come back to it after you see the movie. The movie has been out for a bit, but I know I'm also the type of person to wait months to see a movie. Like I just watched the new Puss in Boots movie like last weekend and it's been literal months. So yeah, I'm totally with you guys there. But anyways, let's start off with Miguel O'Hara. Uh, first off, this man is basically all back and shoulder. <laughs> After seeing the film, I didn't realize how like emphasized that was. That's basically his whole character design, but I love the silhouette of it and how pointy he is and the way that they rendered him with his animation style. And also the fact that he's basically a vampire, which if you've been here for a bit on my channel, I think I said in earlier videos that I'm on a vampire kick, which is still true. I just watched Twilight the other night with my boyfriend. It's still such a good time and I still have an itch to draw more vampires. So maybe that'll be in a future draw with me. I don't know, but back to this. And I also thought his claws were an interesting aspect of his design and just led to that like point that I really like but I also want to explore like a softer aspect of his character um I had this idea of a portrait of Miguel surrounded by or like holding marigolds I've been doing quite a bit of research into the language and meaning of flowers and some sources I found deem that marigolds signify darker emotions they're often referred to as the herb of the sun according to petalrepublic.com but their meaning can often be of jealousy grief despair and mourning and I feel like Miguel struggles with a lot of these negative emotions in the film so it made me have an idea to pair these bright fluffy flowers with this sharp angular and dark design for a visual contrast but overall cohesive emotional theme based on the meaning of flowers and how Miguel um, expresses himself in the film. As I'm sketching and painting these practice portraits and color studies I was thinking of different ways I could pair him with the marigolds. I keep on imagining either like a half body painting or a crouching position of Miguel surrounded by the flowers with him grasping, with him either like viciously like grasping the flowers intensely in his quote unquote claws or maybe ripping the flowers apart um, with either his mouth or claws because he's, yeah, he's a vampire. Um, so those are some ideas surrounding like what type of position I want him to be in with the marigolds. But I really just want to depict the anger, frustration and rage this character exhibited in the movie but then another part of me considers like a possible solemn aspect more like what I have painted in my sketchbook maybe hinting more at a quiet rage since we see the character very reserved and stoic at the beginning something more subtle I don't know maybe both because I really love the quiet rage idea but I also I really want to do something with some energy and some like bite and edge to it because that's literally the character design so I don't know we'll see but I really like Miguel's character 
and I thought he would have played a larger role in the movie so I'm hoping they delve into him a bit more into the next one or I might have to read more into his origins and stories in the actual comics because I was a was looking up like references of Miguel O'Hara. I was getting a lot of like comic book references and maybe doing a bit of reading to explore his comic characters should aid in how I want to depict him. But yeah, for this specific sketchbook painting study, I think I kind of struggled with the colors at the beginning of it, but that's why we practice. And that's why we do mini paintings in a sketchbook rather than going ham on a canvas or fancy paper at the start. I mean, that's at least what I do. If you do that, all power to you. Love that confidence. But for me, I, I'm um, like a chihuahua, I'm too nervous to do any of that, but I tried to pull off a cool blue underpainting, but when I started to paint with yellow, because the gouache, the acrylic gouache, I'm using, I think I'm using Holbein acrylic gouache, but the yellow wasn't as opaque as what I was thinking it would be. And opaque means like the thickness, the, um, when you lay it down, it's, it's like thick and it doesn't let anything underneath show through. I thought it'd be a lot thicker, but it ended up being quite transparent. So it ended up being in like a green effect, which was really interesting, but not in the way that I wanted. So kind of had to work it back a bit, but I'm, I'm looking into expanding more colors with my gouaches and possibly getting more into gouache and doing more gouache paintings. So, so Hawaiian, if you're listening, I would love to try more of your products. But yeah, anyways, I also don't particularly like how the marigolds came out. They were kind of rushed. And since I was painting them at like a smaller scale, it was difficult to get in the details and ridges of the classic marigolds. I still think that the finished study is nice because it does resemble Miguel and his design, but there are a lot of things I would change going into a final piece. And hopefully I'll have like another draw with me up soon or like a paint with me of an actual like final piece of him because I really like this idea. I really I really enjoy characters who kind of deal with like a sort of like righteous anger or a control issue or I don't know how to word this but you can see he's coming from a like a good place of wanting to keep things intact and keep things right and fair for everyone but this viciousness that comes with this like this like vicious protectiveness is really interesting and I don't know definitely wasn't cool what he did at the end with uh, Miles and basically telling him that he was a mistake and an anomaly and wasn't really supposed to be Spider-Man but he's an interesting character to me even though he kind of played the villain and how could um how could I not draw those shoulders and that face I mean come on all right, so that's how Miguel turned out. Uh, and moving on to the next page, or what I call throw all my ideas together and see what happens page, <laughs> I focus on three more of the Spider-Verse characters, including the Spot, Miles Morales, and Spider-Gwen, and wanted to explore how I would depict them and capture their likeness. I feel like I really went ham with the Spot with this particular um, drawing and painting. I was really inspired how the, I was really inspired by how the film animated him and melded it with my own rendering taste, adding more colors and lines, and overall just having a lot of fun. I love the way they animated the spot, the scratchy, messy feel, reminded me of collaging and building things together in my own sketchbook, and just like the scribbling aspect is so good. It just has such like a traditional, tangible feel, which is really interesting seen side by side with the digital, computer-generated animation styles. Furthermore, I was trying to solve a way I could bleed his portion of the page into Gwen and Miles, and and tie the page together somehow. I didn't really plan at the, I didn't plan before starting the page how it was gonna look. I just really just wanted to draw those three characters on a page and paint them eventually. So it, I set up like a problem for myself to try and unite them all together. And it's spoiler alert, it didn't exactly turn out that well, at least in my eyes, but I still had a ton of fun and it was still great just being able to paint and go crazy with color and stuff. But adding the pink strokes and adding some sunflowers from Milo's section, trying to make them intersect. And I, I also remembered Miles has those moments in the movie where he has visions of the spot and seeing the future and them kind of melding into one and this idea that these characters created each other so melding their motifs together makes sense story-wise and it'd be fun to explore that more in like future drawings or paintings and I keep on saying like 
exploring it into like future final drawings and paintings but like I end up having so much ideas that I'm afraid like not a lot of this is going to be created but I don't know we'll see I'll, I'll maybe just give my excuse to just draw and paint for like a whole week and record all of it and then just have footage for like the next couple weeks of draw with me let I me mean, know if you guys would be interested if there was just like a solid block of like two weeks of just spider-verse stuff and my own spider sonas um I feel like that could possibly get boring, but I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Moving on with Gwen, I added some clouds in the background that ended up really getting lost uh, towards the end, but I, th I thought it could be really fun to get pastel to match with her world, but ultimately I wanted to depict her with like a determined and focused look in contrast to the way I depicted Miles' portrait. Not saying that Miles is not determined in this in this film. I feel like both characters had clear goals and dealing with their identity, but I think I was exploring how Miles was being left out and kind of secluded from the other spider people in community and and just really yearning just to be known and understood and be with his friends again while Gwen was a part of that group and became increasingly concerned with doing the right thing and following orders and eventually leading the way and stepping into her identity and priorities towards the end of the movie with kind of being the leader of the spider people who are trying to fix things and try and deal with this spot guy. But I wanted to continue the flower aspect as well. Um, calling back to the um, song Sunflower, we all know it from the first movie and how it played everywhere and permeated the music charts that year. I also looked into the meaning of sunflowers as well. According to uniguide.com, by the way, all these um, websites I'm referencing. So I'll have them linked down below if you want to do your own flower research. But um, some flowers meanings include happiness, optimism, honesty, longevity, peace, admiration, and devotion. And I think a lot of these characteristics can be tied back to Miles as a character, but most of all, honesty as it pertains to this specific story in Across the Spider-Verse. He wrestles with keeping his identity hidden from his parents, as well as dealing with lies of omission throughout the film when his closest friends keep him in the dark on what's going on and this whole spider people world. He had been missing, um, he had been missing feeling connected to spider people like him, and it had been years until he found out about the whole spider society that Peter and Gwen and the spider people from the last movie were a part of. Honestly, it's something he really values, but he's also lying and keeping things hidden from his parents, which really shows how believable of a character and teenager he is, and makes things a lot less black and white and more interesting to explore character-wise. Also, I had to keep reminding myself that he's just a teenager i think he's like 16 or 17 in this film and he's dealing with such big things like dimensional crossing problems and all those sort of things while he's still trying to figure out who he is and so many of these spider people that he meets are so much older and they have their themselves more like figured out um and i think that was what across the spider verse was about for gwen as well she struggles with honesty at the beginning and trying to find a place in her world when she and when she does reveal herself to her father it kind of ends horrifically almost in her own uh death pretty much um she then desperately tries to find purpose outside her world and escape her problem reunites with miles but can't really tell him what's going on until he figures it out himself also there's a really interesting narrative and queer subtext surrounding her character as well um, as a headcanon or possibly actually canonized that she is trans through the flag in her room or the trans flag on her father's police uniform. The color is prominent throughout her world um, and her own like story and her struggle to be accepted and seen and her own issues being very relatable to queer communities. Um, I don't think it's my place to discuss more of that discourse, but I'm going to link a video and an article I've read from people who have more credibility in speaking about that topic. So I'll link it down in the description if you're interested, but it's super interesting and of her character. Um, I really like that aspect or possible interpretation of her character. I think it's really interesting and the flower that I'm kind of thinking about for Gwen is the bluebell. According to woodlandtrust.org, the bluebell is a symbol of humility, constancy, gratitude, and everlasting love. 
And if you wear a wreath of bluebells, you will only be able to speak truth. And I think that would make such a beautiful portrait in the future of Gwen with bluebells around her neck, hinting back to honesty like Miles and staying true to herself, making her identity and values be known to the people she cares about the most. Also, adding dashes of bluish periwinkle to her design could be so cool and really help to break up the white. Honestly, don't hate me for this, but I'm not a huge fan of her design for these movies, so I would probably end up redesigning, redesigning her spider suit. Um, it's not a bad design. It's super strong and striking visually. It works. It's a good character design, but it's just not my personal taste with the, the majority white. So it's uh, ultimately, I had a ton of fun painting both of them in a different way, and I would love to make fully finished pieces of both of the characters in the spot. I don't know why I just put both of the characters in my script. Yeah, I would do a finished piece of Spot. Spot is goofy, but I would also want to do like his his post whole, I don't know what you would call it, his full actualization and becoming like this whole like whole whole, I guess it would be. Before I uh, give myself a uh, headache from trying to figure that out, um, I would love to make fully finished pieces or pieces inspired by the characters of like most of the characters, especially drawing Gwen because I already projected my broad shoulders onto her design because why not? Um, just to have some strong shoulders and lats to swing through the city. I'm just saying. Also, I just want to see more broad shouldered female characters kind of like Vi from Arcane, which now that I'm thinking about it, it'd be cool to do a draw with me with those characters because I tried to draw them in the past and for some reason it just wasn't working, but um, it'd be cool to tackle it again. Also, I think the when is the second season supposed to come out? I don't know. It's been since 2021, I think that's when it came out, like fall 2021. So I'll have to look that up, see when the next season's coming up. So it'd be fun to stir up some hype by doing some um, draw with me's of those characters. But yeah, just looking for more diversity in the bodies that we see animated. Um, I know it's just a cartoon. It's not real, but why can't we have more women like Louisa from um, Encanto? That would be great but ultimately i think that's why spider-verse movies speak to so many people i mean yeah the story is great the animation art direction is purposeful and stunning and groundbreaking but so many people can identify with the characters and the possibility that there is a spider person a probability of a spider person that is like you or looks like you or struggles with the same things as you do which i think is really important there's something for everyone and possibilities are endless and leave so many doors open. And it's so fun to see everyone else either reinterpret the characters or develop their own spider sonas and finding community through the movie. The interactability of this cinematic universe really lends itself to the art community and kind of knits us all together, whether you participate with your own design or just enjoy the designs of others. I saw another YouTuber, Jousta, I think that's how you say their name, but they, they were taking entries for drawing their audience's spider sonas. And I think that could be such a fun idea Idea. Maybe with in a future draw with me or maybe as part of the 20,000 subscriber special. Let me know if you guys are interested. That could be really fun. Or maybe for the 20,000 live stream special, if I do it, I could be drawing your characters. That could be really fun. Yeah, that sounds like a good time. But yeah, overall, I had a ton of fun with the spread and reinterpreting the characters in my own style while being inspired by the styles of the film. It was so hard to stop painting while I was creating this to rest, eat, or do other responsibilities just because because I was enjoying it so much. I really want to do something similar again and put this much effort into painting and just exploring things in my sketchbook. All right, looking forward and what I'm planning on doing based on these. After completing this whole spread, it made me feel warmed up for a canvas painting I'm currently working on. You can check out my last video I uploaded. Just working on the colors kind of gained some confidence and I'm feeling good starting the canvas painting. But it also made me want to draw some of the spider variants like uh, the, the very popular spider punk or Hobie along with the web slinger, of course, the Spider-Man, the cowboy Spider-Man because of my own cowboy characters and maybe having them interact with Bill and Saul. That could be really funny, but also, I've been doodling and compiling messy sketches of my spider sona from 2019, along with some new designs of the working title is Spiderfly, my pixie spider sona, but along with my boyfriend's spider boogie, a disco spider variant. 
Um, but I keep on having to put off drawing these due to sticker designing and working on the painting and editing videos. But if you guys are interested in more Spider-Verse inspired art, let me know down in the comments. And yeah, with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're new to my channel, consider liking and subscribing. I have a ton more draw with me's and I post twice a week, Tuesday and Friday. They're usually a draw with me session. And thank you so much again for 20,000 subscribers. It's kind of crazy and it means a lot to me that so many of you guys would be interested in my artwork and support my artwork through watching my videos and supporting my channel so yeah make sure to follow me on instagram for more frequent updates and art posts i pretty much post every day and you can check out my shop for cowboy stickers free digital brushes and pins yeah thank you guys so much for watching i hope you're having a fun summer day take care of yourself drink some water and i'll see you in next week's video bye <laughs>